end up turning around? Um, I'm a little worried because, again, it really depends on where Yaoi kind of wants to go. He could technically help out a lane. He could technically instantly look for these invades. But I think overall, it's better to help out that lane because Brody is going to bully Benny QT for a majority of this game. Yeah, how do you feel about that, Wolf? I mean, especially with those matchups, even Carnal TZ on this Cho, is there, yeah. are they going to get that much value out of it, or are they going to be relying more so on Yaoi to just cause havoc? Yeah, I think that Carnal TZ is more like a, he, he's going to be the frontliner. This Cho will not be like a like a sniping Cho with those flickers, <laughs> because this is a retribution Cho. So you're kind of first in, and then Sanford and uh, uh, Yaoi will be the ones to kind of give up uh, find the better targets. For example, yeah, we can just skip the front lines, get to the back lines, find clay, and then pressure those backliners for Arki Hoshi instead of like Cho looking for the better targets. Oh, but up outside R7 might be in a little bit of trouble. It gets full hit by the power of nature called TZ. He's gonna hit four off of this. R7 might want to get out of there for now, but Albert on the opposite side of the map already just hitting his level four, just power farming his way. Let's see how Echo is going to respond as Turtles coming up in 30 seconds. Yeah, Albert farming quite quickly here, expected with the jungle emblem. Yep, and oh, Cartesi instantly making the play off the clay so far. Forcing on the flip of an instantly, Albert able to respond. Shadow Dance looking so very good. First blood falls into the hands of RRQ. Great idea coming out from Echo, but unfortunately, RRQ she are prepared for it. Clay even had the flicker back then, so that's why that play was questionable, kind of questionable for Echo. Surely you will have the damage, but knowing that Eve does have the flicker, it's too much of a oh. risk. What a oh, stun. Is he still alive here? Skyla might actually get the trade. Oh. Now he survived with just one HP. Nicely done. On the opposite side of the map is Echo. Start the turtle. R7 Black Dragon form. Sanford instantly getting the knockoff onto Albert, but it doesn't really matter as the real one manipulation has forced them out. Echo has got what they want. Petrified from R7 is going oh. to turn it around, but no. Way of the Dragon kicking the Black Dragon underneath the turret, securing the kill and making sure Sanji's life is worthwhile. Oh, Sanji with a stolen times uh, times journey. The entire turtle fight of Araki Hoshi is based on the fact that they have to be the ones to stun up Echo. They have what? The dragon form, they have Eve's control, but that was completely nullified with a stolen Diggy ultimate. And RRQ even lost the retribution battle as Kong TZ and Sanford just made sure that they zone out Albert all the time. Turtle fight is what Echo really banks on in the knockout stages. RRQ has to be able to win those turtle fights, to win those even lord fights later on here. And as you even saw a glimpse of the items, you see that already Benny Cutie locking in that corrosive scythe, gonna be trying to farm up. A lot of attention here, top side though. Well, let's see how they're gonna play it out. Cut TC might be able to make the play again, but Albert is ready for him this time with 4v4 up on this top side and turtle coming up in 47 seconds. Looks like nothing's gonna happen for the time being. Wait, Yaoi? Oh, no, they back off here. That'd be very tense now for RQ. We did say that they need to control the tempo of this game. They have to be the ones to get out of the laning stage with a better economy, but it seems like Echo with just one turtle fight, they now are controlling it. It's not over though, RQ Hoshi. If they find an opening, come the second turtle of the game, maybe they can snowball out of that. But otherwise, Echo will just take over the game. Speaking look. of snowball, RQ ranked yeah. first in damage dealt per minute? Wow. I wasn't expecting that, honestly. I wasn't either, Same. but even when we got a look at that little hexagon graph thing, I mean, you could, in the stats, you could see that they love those team fights. And even the fact that the journey they've had up to this point, this matchup with Echo, they've had to go against some of those more aggressive teams on the way, right? And so they've kind of adopted this playstyle for RQ, whether it's that scrappy, aggressive playstyle or even that utility kind of objective based. Now that's the thing, this is the fight for them. And still, a lot of this focus here on these neutral objectives early on, Turtle, quite low. Yep, so low. Real world manipulation is already up, but the time journey is spent by both sides. Black Dragon Form is in. R7 is waiting for the opportunity to jump on in for the Petrify. Fights one, instantly comboing with Albert. Shadow Execution is looking so very nice right now, but Call TZ still has his retribution, looking for an opportunity. Reverse time is going to send him back, but it doesn't matter. They find that turtle. That's exactly what they have to do, right? RQ, if they can grab a kill, great. But if you can at least get those objectives where you start getting that favor in your advantage, allow yourself to allow Skyler 
Hell, even yeah. Clay to come online faster this game. That's best case scenario. Let's see how this all goes. Yeah. Items being picked up here, Wolf. We, we did say that RQ Hoshi needed to control that second turtle. They have to take it. We put a lot of emphasis in that, and that's exactly what they did. That's why now they have equalized. They now have the advantage. And this is off of Vin's old, uh, usage of the ultimate as well as Clay. The angle that he utilized, the real-world manipulation, put Sanford in a very bad spot because Sanford had to use the wild charge. Surely it was uh, able to attack Clay, but of course Clay will not be stunned up. Will not be able. His ultimate will not be canceled because of that. And as a result, you have uh, Echo not having a frontliner already with him being taken out by Archeoshi. This is a difficult thing for Sanji to decide, right? When you're running this Valentina, you've got pretty. You've got great three options across from you, right? Do you take the time's journey, the real world manipulation, or maybe even that black dragon form? And that's tough, but now you can see RQ, knowing this minor advantage they built themselves, they're gonna keep pressing the issue here. Now they have one turret down as well. They can work around with that space, but still, this also allows Skylar to continue to farm up with somewhat of a safety measure. And if Vin continues to protect Skylar, this is the best thing that can happen for him right now in this portion of the game. I think for the most part of it, right? Bottom side, R7's gotta be careful here. If he jumps on forward, Benny QT is gonna kill him. So now they're dividing and conquering. Three on top side, two on bottom. Oh. Sanford finds an angle for a flicker wild charge, which oh. almost resulted into a kill. R7 is still alive. Black Dragon wants to get on out of there as tier one falls. Tier two is the next oh, to drop. Man. I was just about to say, there was a lot of focus on Arkyoshi up top lane. If R7 keeps himself alive and defend the turret up down bottom, that will be a favorable trade for Arkyoshi. And boy, oh boy, R7, he did not fail us. Even with the flicker usage coming out from Echo, he's able to get out of there. Yeah, but with real world manipulation already used in the mid lane, this turtle will go over to our RQ Hoshi. Now developing a lead for themselves. Is this the momentum? Is oh. this the turnaround? Clay ends up dying to Benny QT already. Sanford with the power nature fights the wild charge. No, he instantly uses his ult to get him out of there, but it's timed out. And now he's getting kicked out by the woods. By the way, in the dragon, now he is able to secure the kill, but Car TZ is able to get the trade. Now he's next, should be the next. Ball. No! doesn't pick him up. Skylar no! no! He hit the tower twice! That is a <laughs> disaster there for RQ. I mean, they found a couple, a couple setups and everything else, but they couldn't capitalize to make it even further in their favor, Wolf. A very scrappy fight from both teams. You saw, however, Ben Q did not scrap himself. Finding Clay, even after the flicker, because of the fact that Clay kind of reacted a split second later than he should, he was taken out by the by the uh, projectiles coming out from Ben Q. Eventually, Carl TZ wanted to go for Vin. Yeah, surely they did for some time journey as well as the flicker, but man, they exchanged for a kill. And Carl TZ dying twice already in this game. That's not good for Echo. Oh, the damage coming in from Skylar as well. Yeah, picking up right, right there that moment before he popped that torn apart memory. He picked up the Malefic Ward. You can see it, right? Skylar's in a comfortable position now, has the items that he needs on this Brody, can continue to put pressure wherever he decides to be. You see Vin and Clay parking themselves a lot of times around him because if anyone gets trapped in that death box, it's going to be tough for them to deal with. But still at this point, RQ now a little bit of a comfortable lead to work with. Can they transition to this into a first Lord pickup? Oh, they should. It, it's imperative for the side of uh, RQ Hoshi to take care of that Lord again. Echo does have good scaling, but RQ Hoshi, they do have a big advantage already. You can see and feel Skylar now with his power spike. At nine minutes in, it's the mid game. He, we know that the weapon Master Brody is gonna pack up a punch. It's something that RQ is utilizing right now. Ooh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 No, he gets that. No way he gets that. But now, with no shattered memories here, Call TZ may have a little bit of difficulty to getting on in. It's been forced to put her on out of here as Sanford is able to get some good damage for the time being. But that's going to be Lord. Time journey already being used, but Skyler. instantly dying over to Saji. And Saji ends up getting traded back. Skylar gets kicked, and oh. now with him dead, this allows Benny to keep on going forward. He doesn't care anymore, but Albert is running off crazy. They fight in a three for two trade in favor of RRQ. How do did Skylar survive that? What a play there. And also a misstep by Echo. They couldn't capitalize on that kill. Benny Cutie was out of that fight. And now it's RQ driving down with his momentum. Well, the way that he survived there was great. And he didn't panic. Also, I would like to credit 
he touched the Guardian Spire. This is high and dry ground with a lot of like attack items. That's why even the Guardian Spire would have taken him off. Instead of like fully backing down, he actually stopped for a bit so that he will not be hit by the Guardian's barrier materializing in front of him. Skylar is cracked. Oh, they are just, they're going so far right now. With the momentum, Faltizi getting a good kick on the Diggy so far, but here comes the Black Dragon Claw to zone them off. Faltizi is stuck, he's oh, trapped, oh. he's dead! And now the rest of the team is going to be hitting onto the inhibitor. The Lord is already down, but the real world manipulation looking to turn it around. Time journey to get his team out of there. RRQ have got what they want, and now they back off. And now it's RRQ's time to play with this momentum in their favor, and they're doing exactly that. Wolf. What did this last couple minutes here transition? It's only 11 minutes in the game. How's it looking for RRQ? Oh, definitely looking good for RRQ. This is their power spike, as we talked about. But then again, we also look at the other components of the, their composition. With a Divine Glaive available for the Eve, who opted to go for the Penetration Boots this time, Clay will be hurting a lot of Echo. Despite it, like, we're looking at the real-world manipulation, you don't really look at the damage that it outputs, but with all of the items that that Clay was able to get, he is now going to be a threat. Look at that though, Queen Swings coming up from R7. And at the same time, you know, as we get ready for this next pretty much push, or maybe it's the next Lord here, what does Echo have to do to get back into this game, Wolf? I mean, they're yeah. down a 5,000 gold. They've only got two turrets. RQ yeah. owns their side of the map. Well, they have to find a way to kick R7, or uh, Skylar, I mean, into their favor. They have the damage of Medicute already. They have the items that they needed. But the fact of the matter is they are not finding good jumps onto Skylar. I don't think it's that easy as well. Like it's a lot of not, it, it really not. just comes down to Carl Teasy and Sanford. They're the only people who can really do it. And even Sanji, whatever he takes, he's going to get punished. Like the Black Dragon form seems like a good idea, but considering how far ahead RQ is right now, it's oh, disgusting. Yeah. The biggest thing that was just picked up here by Benny Cutie is that Wind of Nature. You mentioned right. it earlier, Gideon. It's a strong item, right? And that can actually turn the tide of these team fights, if they're able to allow Benny Cutie to stay alive. Conceal play coming out, but they're just kind of scouting around here. They know that they don't have oh much vision. Goodness. Wow. You can hear the roar, by the way. Vince, Vince Diggy does have like Divine Glaive. And with just two, like, two time bombs, he's able to put Count Easy down to 80% HP. That's a tank. Uh, this guy's, the, 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 times, the, the time bombs, <laughs> they, hurt. they hurt. They really hurt. It's Shut shocking. That. Wait, is this an engagement? We hear see all oh, Sanford. He had an opportunity. Really good Guardians rare, but no follow up so far. Call TZ trying to get Woo. into the Lord pit right now as R7 begins it. And now RQ, oh, they secure the Lord, but now the fight has already begun. The Black Dragon form has to steal the real world manipulation. They're done for many QT. Winds of Nature's ain't going to protect them long enough as the rest of our RQ chase them down. 5 1, 5 2, it's Albert. Four for nothing in favor of RRQ. Sanji, just hide. Don't show yourself. He's oh. out of here. Skylar almost dying. Torn apart. Memories oh, hit. No. And Albert, he That's wants it. Sanji. Give it to him. Give it to him, Sanji. One HP. He's not <laughs> done. He heals back up just in time. Man, Albert wanted that kill, man. Oh, he was damn. going in deep, but still. It's a push from RQ. And now the real world manipulation is out to clear the way. Sanford tries his best. No, he gets pulled back. And now the Lord is in. Kaltizi tries his best, but Skylar puts the final nail in the coffin of this game. GG well played. Over for RRQ. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a series. We got a series. We got a series on our hands. It's 1-1. One, one. This time around, it's RRQ with a dominant game here against Echo. And two important components on the winning recipe of RQ Hoshi. First, Skylar's Brody with the Weapon Master opting to go for maximum damage, winning, or at least evening up in the later stage and act being activated in turtle number two. The 